actually I come from a military family. Um, both my grandfathers in the history books, one flew over Hiroshima, so I kind of followed the trail. Um, I served during the Gulf War as a crypto-linguist, uh, TAC Air, speak Arabic and French, and flew rivet joint missions for the military during that time. My grandfather was my best friend, and I wanted to follow in his footsteps. Not to mention, I love being in the air, so the chance to fly in the Air Force was amazing. The military, I loved it. Um, I hated my career getting cut short, but some back injuries caused me to lose my wings, plus obviously PTSD. I needed a way to get, give back in a way, both as a Christian, but also as a former veteran. And now I'm given the opportunity where I'm a veterans liaison here as well, to be able to help my brothers and sisters in arms, to find help back from you know, this horrible mental health disease of PTSD and trauma, and, and get them back on track where they can actually be functioning and be happy again. This is everything. Um, this is my therapy for my PTSD, but we work for a company that, whether we get them into our program or not, you've got to help every person that calls in. You don't know where they are at in their life. If someone calls in looking for help and they have no money, no insurance, and you don't give them that effort, you don't know if they're suicidal. You don't know if that one call may be the only call they make. When a veteran reaches for help, they're breaking this veil of silence that's been forced on us. It's more critical. You've got to give them a moment of hope, of believable hope, as Michael calls it, to be able to know that whether I get them in treatment or not, I help them during that phone call. That I help guide them to getting help either through the VA, through a private program, be it us or someone else. But where they're different, they know that they're not alone. Because that is the big thing, is most addicts, especially military, they feel alone, they feel isolated, nobody cares. The military doesn't care about you anymore because you're not in uniform, it's the thought process. And they don't realize that those of us serve side by side, that shed blood in the same sand, we're still there. And they need to be reminded of that because that one moment of hope, regardless of what happens on that phone call, could be the difference between someone being there the next day and not. My name is Jay Russell, I'm one of the senior admissions navigators at American Addiction Centers.